Today, I'm going to speak about a journey of a small boy, a journey of self-doubt to self-discovery through my presentation title, Gift Wrapping My Life. I want to speak about the journey of the father as we touch upon the journey of a young boy. My father used to run these small canteens in hospitals. And as he met a lot of doctors in these canteens, he aspired that his kids also become doctors. He had only one clear dream, that he wanted to see all his children become doctors. It was primarily for two reasons. One, few of the doctors would come to his uh, canteen, order for food and not speak to him. The other, he would be inspired by the service that doctors and the medical professionals served in the society. And he wanted his kids to also follow that path. With a lot of hard work, trying his luck into different business and obviously the support of my mother, he was successful in ensuring that three of his children become doctors. And it was time for the most youngest and the fourth one to continue the tradition getting into the medical profession. Talking of me, I was the youngest and the most naughtiest in the family. I would love every small things that would make me happy. It could be walking for miles in the railway track or it could be throwing the stones at the mango tree. Every small thing would make me very happy. The only thing that I didn't do as a small boy was studying. I was a below par performer in school and my marks would sometime seem like telephone numbers. It would be single digit. And it was so embarrassing for me at times where I would go through a lot of bullying, etc. But I was still happy because I was the unique of the lot. My sister till date tells me that I would be so happy with a lot of red marks in my report card because I was the only one who had the highest number of red marks in the report card. And I would come running all the way to the house celebrating that. So all small things in life obviously made me happy and that was me as a young boy. But you know they say all kids need a little help, a little hope and somebody who believes in them. How many of you agree with this? Show of hands, right? Uh, behind the happy face was a sense of disbelief, a sense of self-doubt, a sense of shame. The reason why I tell you this is because I was often compared with my older siblings. There would be relatives who would come home and only talk about my older siblings who had achieved so many, so many things in life but would never speak about me who was not good in studies. I remember relatives and the neighbours walking to the room and meeting my older sibling, my elder brother and asking him for his awards and certificates, right? And asking him for his mark sheets and all the newspaper clippings he had. As a nine-year-old boy, I would lock myself into, into the room and cry for hours. I prayed to God, wish I at least had one award that I could cherish throughout my life. Wish I could at least be featured in one newspaper which will make me happy and make my family proud. But the society would not give me an opportunity to, would not give an opportunity to realize how good I was as a person and what reflected in my marks was just a number. I want to talk about a very interesting story and this story transformed my life. As a boy, as a child, everybody would wish to at least win one award or participate in a competition and win at least a consolation prize. Unfortunately, it was the exact opposite for me. I would lose in every single contest that I participated as a child. It could be anything as weird as a fancy dress, singing, dancing, etc. I would just not win. And it was not about just losing, it was also about facing a lot of humiliation, embarrassment and bullying from friends telling, us, telling me that you're not good for, good for anything. Right? Uh, I still remember the day where I participated in a fancy dress contest and like always I lost in it. My mom took me to a small shop before going home. She bought me a, she purchased a steel bowl and she gift trapped the steel bowl. She told me that son, when you go back home, tell people that you actually won the contest. It was my mom's way of gift wrapping the kind of struggle that I went through in school. And that day I realized that it was not just about me. My loss was not affecting me, but it's also affecting my mother, whom I love the most. The another very important part of my journey was this telephone booth, this actual telephone booth which is now transformed into a, uh, into a toy shop. This was my first workplace. I started working here when I was nine years old. 
my dad used to run the canteens and telephone booth in hospitals and i would sit there after school or during my summer vacation supporting dad and earning a little bit in return that would help me in my pocket money as a 9 year old boy and sitting inside a telephone booth inside a hospital setup is no joke you generally have a lot of people come there either to share a good news with the family but most of the times come there to share a bad news which is death of a family member and so and so forth so as a 9 year old boy i would gaze at the digital meter pray that people had long conversations and at the same time be very empathetic my first workplace taught me the power of empathy in every conversation and told me something that i have the power to heal people after the telephone call i would sit with the family members talk to them console them and i feel that was really too really much too much for a 9 year old boy to do and that was my realization that i could achieve something in life much beyond just being a doctor you're always one decision away from a totally different life how many of you agree and that decision came to me in my 10th standard unfortunately i scored the minimum required cut off that qualifies me into a science seat in my 12th and 11th and 12th and my dad was back to his dream of wanting to see the final son become a doctor i put my foot down and told my dad sorry dad i can't fulfill your wish my heart is not in this field and i don't want to become a doctor it was very tough but my parents encouraged me to go ahead and pursue my dream which is handling people handling emotions and creating a positive impact in the lives of people yes for the society from the good for nothing boy i became the odd child out they would always compare look at these three kids who are doctors and the fourth one is good for nothing but i had something to prove the moment i joined my pu which is in my 11th right and graduation i started studying i was a class topper in my 12th and i was a university talk, topper in my graduation i i fell in love with the subject so much that i would all teach all the back benchers how to decode complex jargons into simple simplified uh, language and help them clear exams so i became the spotlight in my college and uh, graduation and guess what my dad did like every parent my dad came to me and said if i knew you'd study so much i might well would have put you in the field of medicine 2008 june is when i can say i got my dignity back the reason why i say i can i got my dignity back was i got placed at infosys as their youngest hr from a 19 year old boy to a hr professional infosys transformed the way i looked at people and i handled people the picture that you see is my first newspaper clipping that happened in october 2008 where i got a chance to cut the cake when infosys celebrated its 1 lakh employees the second company that i joined was intuit i joined after eight and a half years of service with uh, infosys intuit happened to me uh, by chance and i was i i was invited for an opportunity as a hr leader at intuit i led the diversity and inclusion field which i'm still very passionate about diversity and inclusion is all about how how help, how do you help women leaders persons with disabilities and the lgbt community thrive and the caricature that you see there is a farewell gift that i got when i joined intuit i launched this very unique award winning initiative called the girl child project i said with every women who joins my team we will sponsor education of a girl child from the rural area for life as i left into it in the four and a half years journey i ensured that i helped 250 girl children educate for life and get good jobs that was the impact that i made at into it thank you when i joined infosys i dreamt of being a hr head and i thought in my late 40s or 50s when i have some gray hair i'd probably take over the leadership role but god has been kind last year coin switch kuber india's largest crypto platform uh, offered me the role of a head of hr and i joined the uh, role one year back it's been an incredible journey leading people operations at coin switch well uh, they say empty pockets and empty stomach teaches you some of the best lessons in life and throughout this journey i realized that hr is not about creating a positive impact in the company it's also about how can you really make a huge impact to the community in in large that led me to start ramlan foundation which is an ngo today i started ramlan foundation 7 years back and till date 
the Ramlan Foundation has touched upon 10,000 plus lives of underprivileged. I want to share two powerful stories in this journey. The first one is of baby Hanumant, who was given by his mom to a relative because she couldn't afford the cardiac treatment of the baby. She stayed away from the baby for a while. I got to know about this. We tried and sponsored the uh, cardiac treatment for baby Hanumant. And today, Hanumant and mom lives together. <laughs> While they lived together, it was also a journey of, uh, for, for me to reu reunite a mom with her lost child. The second one is the story of Maimuna, who was found in the outskirts of Mangalore, midnight. She is a mentally challenged uh, girl who was taken care by her parents. I got a call midnight that she had lost her parent and she was uh, in the streets, victim of sexual abuse, uh, trying to commit suicide is when I got a call from the people around. Uh, the first thing that I did was to ensure that I spoke to an old age home and get her safe there. This was a picture that I captured when I visited the old age home after six months. I saw her smiling and that made my day. Uh, a lot of them ask me, why do you spend your weekends on charities, Isha, and why would you not want to do something around work? And I tell them that after my life, I want people to remember me for all the, professional, all the personal accomplishments than my professional accomplishments. I want, to rem I want people to remember me for all the kind of charitable work that I've done for the society. Children for Charity program is one such program that I started two years back. We go to every school, teach kids the habit of giving. And we tell them end of the year, no math assignment, no science assignment, just do one assignment, which will be about helping the poor. As we speak, 5,000 kids have been covered in these programs, and even till date, I get assignments from children saying the good work that they've done for the poor. Throughout this journey, if I have to tie a bow around the conversation, from a small boy who closed the door, crying, wish I had one award at least, I am today holding 60 plus awards, including the Economic Times Emerging Leader 2022 that was just given me a month back. <laughs> these awards to me, was a gift of motherhood that I gave back to my mom. Uh, it is also, the journey is also about the gift of happiness that I gave to 10,000 plus lives through my foundation. And more importantly, all of you should know, it was the beautiful gift of self-belief that I gave to myself when the entire world didn't believe that this boy can do something in life. Thank you. As I end, I just want to leave you with three very important things. One is, Convert empathy into actions. You will often meet two sets of people. One who will look at an underprivileged or a poor person and say, oh, I'm so sorry, I feel bad for that person. Second, who will do something for them. I want all of you to be that person who will do something for the poor and not just look at them and empathize. Convert your empathy into action and only then you will see end results. Your empathy is not going to change the life of an underprivileged. Start small. It's not always about the money. When I started Ramlan Foundation, I had 200 rupees in my pocket. We've touched 10,000 plus lives and donated over lakhs of rupees. But it's not always about the money. You can donate your old clothes, you can gift an old toy at home, or you can just visit our orphanage and spend time with people who need the most. And third, please, please, please believe in yourself. You're much more than the marks that show on your report card. Thank you so much. So what happens to my dad? Uh, my dad was hospitalized few days back and at the hospital while, and he's been enjoying this journey throughout. While he's hospitalized, he, told, he just told me one thing, that Zishan, I'm so proud to be, a, to be your father. And that to me summarizes my journey of self-doubt to what I've discovered in life. Thank you so much.